Hey guys, and welcome back to Hoosier Hardware. And today we're gonna to be talking about the RTX 3090. Now I've had this card for a while now. I actually got very lucky at the end of 2020 and was able to snag one of these at MSRP, one of the Founders Editions, no less. And I'm gonna talk about the cooling experience with this card because even with a massive stock cooler, this thing is still at least kind of loud in a normal system. And uh, obviously, if you can uh, look at the system behind me, you know I've uh, found a way around that noise and I've actually tamed this card from a cooling perspective. So we're gonna talk about my experience with the custom water loop that I created around my RTX 3090. But before we talk about cooling down a PC, we're gonna talk about cooling you down during the summer months and that's with the coldest water. Now this water bottle is fantastic. Not only does it come in many different sizes and colors, but it is a quality water bottle. It's um, not gonna break easily. Obviously it has this nice clip on top so that you could actually uh, put this on a bag or something like that. Uh, it's very grippy with these sort of rubber bits around it and Right now you can get into a giveaway from the coldest water. Link is in the description down below. They're running uh, rolling giveaways as well as there's a discount code down there as well. So go and check out the coldest water now. But let's talk about this RTX 3090. All right, so for those of you that don't realize, the RTX 3090 has a massive cooler on it. And by the way, I actually uh, definitely love their unboxing experience here. Oh boy. All right, here we go. Well, oh, that's gonna fall out. Just kind of clear the way here. So this is the RTX 3090 cooler. Now this thing is uh, a little bit controversial, at least when it first launched with these fans sort of being on opposite sides of the card and the card actually passing air completely through it. Uh, through this fan in particular, this other fan that's uh, near the uh, side of the PC just pushes air out the back of the PC. But this is a comically large cooler for an air-cooled card. To give you a little bit of reference, this GTX 660, it's about the size of a lot of GTX uh, 3060s actually right now from EVGA as well. Very comparable in that size. Actually, I'll turn it around here so you can kind of get a better look at the size comparison here. But yeah, this 3090 is ridiculously large. In fact, I have my scale here so that we can take a look at just how heavy the cooler by itself is because keep in mind, the actual card is no longer in here. The, the RTX 3090 is in my system behind me with the custom water loop. So I do want to take a look at the actual weight of this thing in pounds, no less. So the cooler here is 4.2 pounds. For those of you that prefer kilograms, that's 1.9 kilograms. This thing is huge, almost two kilograms in mostly metal to keep the 3090 cool. So we've established here that it, it takes a lot of cooling to cool the RTX 3090. And the best, or at least the uh, easiest way to actually keep this card tame aside from leaving it alone in its stock air cooler, which is probably gonna be a little bit louder, is to create a custom water loop around it. Now, I used almost all of Corsair's water cooling components for simplicity's sake, because when you're buying from one company like Corsair, you know that everything's just kind of kind of play well together. And I will link several of these things down in the description down below in case you're interested in creating your own custom loop. But creating a custom loop has always been sort of a bucket list PC item for me because I've wanted to do it. But every time I've gotten close to actually creating a custom loop, there's always something else in my system that I feel is a better use of the money to actually upgrade. For instance, until I had a Ryzen 5950X, the CPU was the next upgrade. Then before the 3090, the 3090, coming up from the 1080 Ti that I used to run was the next upgrade. So uh, really, I'm only recommending custom water loops for certain groups of people, people that either are maxed out on their system already, or possibly you just value noise so much and running your components cool so much that you're willing to invest hundreds of dollars into it because the custom loop that I created probably cost, and I'm not really directly accounting for things here, but eight or $900 in just the cooling components. That's all the fittings, the tubing, the pump res combo, the water block, the GPU block, everything probably cost 
cost close to $900. Now with all that being said, I will say the actual building of this particular custom loop was fairly simplified because of a couple of different things out there. First and foremost, there's more information out for water cooling PCs now than ever before. Through the efforts of people like Jay from Jay's Two Cents and other YouTube channels that look at custom water cooling and give tutorials on it, it's easier now to build a custom loop just because of the sheer amount of information available at your fingertips. They give you nice how-tos with how to actually get your custom loop put together. You, there's do's and don'ts. There's just a ton of information out there. So a huge amount of credit goes to everyone out there, content creators in particular on YouTube, that are really good about putting out content to give people the tools to feel comfortable enough to create a custom loop. On top of that, I already mentioned, and I promise this is actually not content sponsored by Corsair. It's once again, sponsored by the coldest water, but the availability of components that just play well together, whether we're talking about EK water blocks or in my case, Corsair, you can go to one company and basically find everything you need to get your custom loop together. In fact, many of these companies now have configurators on their website that you just put in the parts that you actually have and it will give you a configuration. And a lot of them like Corsair, for instance, you can basically build your entire loop through their configurator and then just hit add to cart and it adds everything you're gonna need to the cart. So the tools available, not just with information online, but also the tools from manufacturers of components for these custom loops is just top notch right now and it makes it very, very easy if you have the funds available to get the components together to actually build a custom loop. Now with all that said, the other thing that I would highly recommend you do if you're considering a custom loop is get plenty of fittings of various angles because one of the things that I found when I was putting together my loop, I was making some adjustments on the fly. Now this Fantex case that I'm working in, also linked down below in case you're interested in this case, is fantastic because I can put two 360 millimeter radiators in there. In fact, one of them, the one on the front, is actually a thick radiator. The problem was there just wasn't quite enough space to put both of the fittings where I wanted them for the inlets and the outlets with the radiators. So I did have to rotate the front radiator around to have the fittings, the inlet and the outlet at the bottom instead of at the top. It was a whole thing, but because I had so many fitting extensions, these, uh, these, these different maneuvers that I was doing were actually fairly simplified where I could get the angles moving in the correct orientation before I even started running the tubing. Uh, my brother, for instance, just built a loop somewhat recently and it, it's, it's not the looker that you would hope necessarily from a custom loop, but that's because he didn't have the 45 degree uh, fitting extensions or the 90 degree extensions either. So he had to make all of his runs directly out of the inlets and outlets of the various, uh, the pumps, the water blocks and the rads. So his runs were just a little bit more complicated. So if you have those fitting extensions that allow you to make those 45 degree or 90 degree turns, it just makes your life a lot easier when it comes to building one of these custom loops. So I guess finally that brings us to the performance and was it worth it for me? And for my part, for my main system, because I do a lot of gaming, but also a lot of production work with these videos on my main rig, it was absolutely worth it because the system is extremely quiet. Now I don't really have a sound sort of test here for you because it's really hard to capture that sort of thing with a microphone uh, through a video, but I'm running all of my fans at just a static 30% across the board. That is the fan speeds never ever change. The pump is running at 100%. The only thing that does change when it comes to volume from the system, that is noise from the system when it's under load. The coil line from the card, especially when it's gaming is there. Uh, that's not something you can really get away from with a lot of these cards uh, anyways, but there is a little bit of a coil whine when it comes to gaming, but then also the power supplies fan does ramp up and down as needed for the EVGA power supply I have. But other than that, the system's actual noise stays almost level across the board, whether I'm just perusing the desktop or whether I'm actually doing something that's heavy lifting from the system. And as for actually taming the 3090 itself, was I able to cool this thing down? Well, I'll just give you a little bit of a uh, piece of the heaven benchmark run that I ran just to let this thing run on loop to see how hot the GPU would get. And needless to say here, the RTX 3090 in this custom loop is absolutely tamed. And really, even if it wasn't, I could always speed those fans up just a little bit to give me a little bit more thermal headroom with my components. So yeah, 
The RTX 3090 is completely tamed by this custom loop and the experience is frankly fantastic and I would highly recommend building a custom loop for some of these high-end gaming PCs if it's something you're interested in and if you have the disposable income to accommodate for spending literally hundreds of dollars on custom cooling a PC. It, it's a rewarding experience and frankly I think it's well worth it if you fit into that group. Now if you're just looking to game and you don't really care about noise, it might not be worth it. But for me, and I know a lot of people out there, it definitely is. So I know today's video was a bit of a rambling video, but of course I do wanna hear from you guys. Do you custom cool your gaming PCs? Uh, those of you out there with custom loops of any kind, whether we're talking about just CPU, GPU, or both, or maybe you'd go with one of those sort of blended things, uh, one of those sort of NZXT adapters that you can put on GPUs and then use just an AIO on your GPU. Let me know how you prefer to cool your GPUs in those comments down below. And if you like this video and you want to see more like it, give it a like, share, subscribe, and comment. All those things are very helpful for the channel. You can follow me both on Instagram and on Twitter at Hoosier Hardware. And as always, I'll let YouTube queue up a couple more videos from my channel for you to watch. I'm Shane with Hoosier Hardware, and I'll see you guys in the next video.